Leader, a matter of deep concern to me over the course of this pandemic has been the cessation of cancer screening, delay cancer diagnosis and the disruption of, to treatments of can cancer patients. I have raised the matter of the shutdown to normal healthcare in response to COVID-19, along with many other uh, questions, with the Minister for Health in correspondence dated the 16th of November. To date, almost three months later, I have received no answers. The silence is deafening, as it is revealing. I had to write to the Minister because he did not stay in the Shannon Chamber to take questions relating to COVID-19 response on, uh, on the 10th of November. The smug thumbs-up emoji, Minister for Health, has not deigned to answer a single question that I put to him in writing. He represents that a government that is totally out of touch with the suffering of ordinary people, a government that is failing ordinary people. I want to read a story of just one lady's experience in our constituency during the pandemic. At the beginning of this year, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, having discovered a lump on my breast in December last year. I decided to see a breast surgeon privately having encountered significant delays when attempting to access breast triple assessment clinics via the public system. Following initial investigations, the diagnosis of cancer was confirmed and I was recommended to have a mastectomy. I was shocked to hear the following, that following my mastectomy, I would not be offered reconstructive surgery at this time due to COVID-19 pandemic. Breast reconstructive surgery has not been deemed essential. To me, this seems cruel, an unnecessary deviation from the usual standard of care in breast cancer treatment. I received the news that I had cancer on my own. I went to hospital to undergo surgery on my own, and I was not allowed to have visitors. This was not easy, but I understand the times that we are living in and what has to be done to protect the healthcare system and our vulnerable members of our society. I cannot understand, however, that rationale for denying women reconstructive surgery at the time of a mastectomy during the pandemic. The reasons quoted that it was more extensive surgery that would involve a greater operative time and length of stay in hospital. The effect of deeming the surgery non-essential means that I will go home without a breast. I will have to wait several months embarked on another surgery, another hospital admission and another period of recovery. Frankly, I cannot see the log logic in this. I would like to know how and why and whom the decision to deem reconstructive surgery following cancer treatment non-essential was made. I think those who make the decision fail to consider the huge physical and psychological impact a decision like this has on women who are undergo undergoing treatment for breast cancer. Once again, I ask the Minister to provide a comprehensive assessment on the impact of COVID-19 restrictions on the health of the nation, on the healthcare system and on the outcomes for diagnosis and treatment of all conditions, and in short, medium and long term. The analysis it is essential for forming good public health policy. Thank, thank you, Cahill. Thank thank you. Uh, we started the, today with uh, Senator Kilgan talking about uh, cancer services. I, I think we should, uh, whilst I agree with both of you, and it's not to you know, diminish the serious nature of what you've brought forward, I think what we need to do alongside talking about cancer screening and how much it has been affected by COVID and how much we all want it back because of all of the ramifications that it will have, um, I think it's probably very fair at the same time to say that those uh, cancer services that continue to be in operation in our hospital uh, have done tro uh, Trojan work last year. Um, and I can only say this on a personal experience as I had recourse to be a, a patient of Beaumont for six months last year um, in the cancer screening services. They worked their absolute socks off. When there were times where they couldn't do clinics, when it was allowed and we went back to level four and level three, um, they worked clinics round the clock on Saturdays and Sundays to try and make sure that they caught up with those women who were in waiting uh, in limbo for the weeks that they were. So I just have to pay tribute to them, um, to our nurses and our doctors, for the Trojan efforts that they do. Uh, but you're absolutely right, as in, uh, indeed Catherine Ardias, is that our screening services are absolutely vital to keeping our numbers down and to catching patients at the early stages so that they can be treated, helped and cured. And I think that's really, really important. Um, the poignant letter that you wrote out about the lady who had her own distress last year, which was probably compounded by the fact that she couldn't have her surgery, is really heartbreaking to listen to. But I can only assume, and you, your question to me was to ask who made the decision and who was responsible. I don't know, but I will find out for you. But I have to assume that it was the clinicians made the decision on the best medical interests and outcomes for their patients. But I will find out if you give me the details later on.